This system has eight NVIDIA Blackwell GPUs, each with 180 gigabytes of HBM memory for a total of over 1.4 terabytes of GPU memory in the system. Plus, we have eight 400 gigabit Ethernet Connect X7 NICs, plus two more for the CPUs. And then we have two Intel Xeon processors, each with 32 DIMMs. What an amazing system this is. So guys, we have a ton to get into today and a giant system. So let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Patrick from SDH, and this is a giant AI training server from ASRock Rack. Now it's affectionately called the ASRock Rack 8U 8X GNR2 SYN B200, but that tells you a lot about what this is. It's an 8U system. We have eight GPUs. It's Granite Rapid, so we know that we have an Intel Xeon 6 processor. Plus, we also have a NVIDIA HGX B200 8 GPU platform. So, you know, there's a whole bunch here, and it's actually all in that model name. And guys, this is a super high-end NVIDIA AI inference and training server from ASRock Rack. It's also uh, preliminary, so what we're gonna show you here, I just wanna warn folks that it might change a little bit. Also, we have to say that, uh, you know, this the video is sponsored because like, I obviously did not go and spend uh, all the money to go buy this. Also, I just wanna say thank you to Sam, who's operating this camera over here, because uh, this thing came in a crate that I think was like 440-ish pounds. So what my plan is, I'm gonna take you through the system so you can see how it all works and explain all the different parts to a large-scale NVIDIA Blackwell system like this. Then we're gonna talk a bit about the performance and also the power consumption of the system. Finally, I'm gonna talk about some of the key lessons learned and some of the cool little features that ASRock Rack has in this. So I, I think we're gonna learn a ton about this server today, but also the NVIDIA Blackwell and B200 generation in general. And so let's get to the hardware. Okay, so let's just go through the system from front to back. This is a huge system, just as a lay of the land, right? All right, so looking at the top of the system, this is really the part that is, you know, the CPUs and the motherboard, the memory, and the north-south NICs are all in the back, right? So the first thing that you'll see up here is we get our storage array. Now, you'll see that this system actually has two different types of drives. We have our Kyoxia drives over here, and we also have another type of drive, which is a Samsung drive. You see these are pretty small, 960 gig drives. The reason is, that these are actually there for the CPU. So these are connected to the CPUs. And what the purpose of these is, that these are things for like an operating system or something like that, where you don't necessarily need the high performance for GPU direct storage or anything. That's why you have these. But these bays are connected to the PCIe switches and that PCIe switchboard, of course, allows you to go and go directly out over the network, or it allows you to go to the GPUs over the PCIe switch complex without having to go to the CPUs. And so you can think of these as really the GPUs, SSDs, well, these are the CPU SSDs. And just a quick note, these blue tabbed drives over here are not hooked up in our system, but I guess in theory, you could go and hook them up if you had the right adding cards and stuff, but they're just not hooked up in our system, so that's why we're not really talking about them. Now, the other feature here is if you look down at this portion, and this is a very unique thing that ASRock Rack does. First, you're gonna see that we have an array of four USB 3 ports, plus we also have a VGA port here. Now this gives us the ability to hook up a monitor, maybe a keyboard, a mouse, and then, you know, of course, you might wanna go and put a USB thumb drive or something for doing some kind of update or whatever. On this side, you're gonna be on the cold aisle, which is generally where you wanna be in these GPU clusters. Now, let's talk about what happens, you know, of course you have your power buttons and stuff, but what happens over here? Because this is the really unique sauce for ASRock Rack. So what you'll see is an array of three network ports. Now, two of these network ports are the Intel i350 AM2 ports, which are one gigabit ports, but then you have another one here, and this is your out-of-band management port. So your A-Speed BMC goes to this port over here, and you can actually just go plug cables in if you want, and you can have a front I.O., right? So you can have your management NICs uh, for the system, but then also for the you know operating system. You can have all of that from the cold aisle, and some people prefer that. But there are other people that prefer that to be on the back of the system, and that's why we have these ethernet cables here. ASRock Rack's solution is they literally run Ethernet cables through the chassis. So they go and they start on the front here, and then they go all the way back to that NIC board in the back, which translates the USB and also the NICs and the VGA and all that kind of stuff to rear IO as well. So you have the option in a single SKU to either have your management and your data NICs, or at least your, yeah, your management NICs for your OS, on the front of the system and have it 
cabled through the cold aisle, or you can go and put that on the back for a hot aisle. Personally, I prefer servicing these from the cold aisle because the hot aisles are just way too hot behind these systems. Now back here is one of the boards that makes this system absolutely work because this is the PCIe switchboard. This takes the PCIe lanes that come from the CPU, which is up here, brings them down via cables into these PCIe switches. Now, once they're there, you have the lanes all switched and so you can have more devices than there are lanes. And that's the whole point of this board because you're gonna need lanes to go back up to go to the storage, so the NVMe storage that's kind of up here in this system. And then also through these high density connectors, you need the PCIe lanes to go to the GPUs. And then in the very back, on the other side of the switchboard, that's where you have those two, four PCIe Gen 5 by 16 slot carriers. And those carriers are the ones that have the four NICs each. So eight NICs total, one for each of the GPUs. So because you have a SSD plus you have a PCIe Gen 5 by 16 ConnectX 7 NIC plus you have a PCIe Gen 5 by 16 GPU that gives you at least 36 lanes of PCIe per GPU plus you also need lanes to go back to the CPUs. So when we talk about the overall system and why these systems are so big this little board actually plays in an outsized importance because it's what makes this whole thing work. Now here we have the server motherboard and we'll see the two heat sinks. Each of those has an Intel Xeon processor. Now this is a dual socket E2 or LGA 4710 system, which means that this is the Intel Xeon 6700 or 6500 series. Now, one thing that you'll notice is that this can technically take the Intel Xeon 6700E, which can go up to 144 cores each, but on this system, you're really gonna have more of the P series or performance cores because that's just more common. But what having the 6700P versus the 6900P series gets you is more dim slots because you have more room on the width of this chassis. So you'll see that each CPU has 16 dims, which means that you get 32 dims total. If this was a Intel Xeon 6900P series, you would only get 24 dims. Okay, now behind this, on a normal motherboard, you might see something like an OCP NIC slot, or maybe you would see PCIe risers. But instead of that, because of the signaling challenges that you have with PCIe Gen 5, you'll see that we actually have MCIO connectors. These MCIO connectors allow us to do things like have our PCIe connections between between here and the PCIe switchboard, which is down below, but it also allows us to go and have connectivity to things like the front storage base. And also if you wanna have, you know, NIC connectivity, whatever the heck you wanna go and put PCIe connectivity, that's what these MCIO connectors allow you to do. Now behind the motherboard, we have this fan partition. Now this fan partition is not cooling the GPUs. It is only here to cool the storage, the CPUs and memory, and then the NICs on the back. Now in this back area, this is really where we have our NICs. And a lot of times you'll see these NICs are our north south NICs that go for things like going from the CPU to a storage array and the rest of the network. So that's really what this NIC area is here. And so you'll see that we have two NVIDIA Connect X7 cards. Okay, now this is the back of the server that is absolutely huge when we have nothing installed. Here we have our NICs on the back. You can see our Connect X7 here, Connect X7 here. We also have these, which this is our rear IO. Now you'll see that we have our two network ports, plus we have our additional out-of-band management port, our VGA port, and our USB ports, plus a couple buttons. That way we can use the back, or we have that option to use the front to manage the server. Now, taking a look here, we have our spaces for our power supplies. We also have our NIC cages on either side. And then here is where all the fans go. And so you'll see that in the back here, as you look through these, that we have the PCBs to go and put our power supplies into, and also the fan connectors that hopefully don't take up too much room in the system. What basically ASRock Rack did was they added this center section. We'll see this in a sec, but they added the center section to give more room to have more airflow for the taller GPU heat sinks. And so because of that, we need more fans and that's exactly what we have. The other thing that changed is that all of these say top now. So you'll see that these say top, whereas in the previous generation, we had some top and bottom ones, but now we just have all ones that say top because they just pop in all in a single direction. 
So this is actually a lot better design. I like that a lot. And then these little LED indicator lights tell us if the fans are engaged and so they're on. And so we know if we've fully inserted these, although they snap pretty well into the chassis. Now let's talk about the next thing that, I, that is really useful here. And that is this, which is a IO or a PCIe card tray. And so one of the cool things with this PCIe card tray is that you get a total of four PCIe Gen 5 by 16 slots. Now this is more than your average desktop has all by itself, but something that you'll notice here is that each one of these is a 400 gigabit per second NIC. So each one of these has a Connect X7 400 gig card, and then you have an OSFP card slot over here. And that is how we get our GPU to network traffic for a scale out solution like this. Now, if you've ever dealt with the NVIDIA Connect X7, you know that these are not like, you know, 10 watt devices by any means. In fact, often the optical modules can use more than that. And so we do need to have cooling for these heat sinks on each of these NIC trays. And that's exactly what we have here. And so you just take these NIC trays, you get them lined up in the chassis, slide them in, and then boom, lock them into place. And so this essentially is an easy way to go. And if you need to service the NIC, you can just pull it out of the system. It's actually better than a lot of the two you just standard servers where it can be a pain with all the cable connections because we have a high density connector on the back for our data and power. This is a really nice solution, guys. Now, the other new part about this new system is these power supplies. Now, these are all three kilowatt power supplies. And so you'll see that they're Delta brand, very high quality brand. And at three kilowatt each, the challenge is in a system that's like a B2, HDX B200 system, you need a lot of power. And so you have a total of six of these on each side. So I'll just start putting these in here. But one of the reasons that you actually have these six by six configuration is because you can in a data center have a situation where you have a power rail fail. And when that happens, like let's say part of your data center power goes down, you wanna make sure that your system is continuing to go and do its training or inference. And so by having a fully redundant set of power supplies, that allows you to keep running even if half of the data center power, you know, you just run out of power or there's an issue with a PDU or anything like that. And so now everything is installed here and you can just see how awesome this system looks. Now for easy service, one of the features that you see on the system is an easy way to get to the GPU board, right? So this entire thing, including the fan wall that's in front, you actually just go and you pull these levers down. And by the way, this thing is super heavy. It's not the, you know, 50 pounds or whatever when we started doing these in the P100, V100 generations. But you can see that the HGPU platform comes out like this and it's on these little rails. So you're gonna see that we have rails on the side and those allow you to easily slide this thing out. One thing I'll just say is if it's on the table, uh, you know, this, it is definitely pretty heavy, we'll just say that. And something I didn't know for way too long as we've been reviewing these is that this HDX platform actually has two handles, there's another one in the back, but you literally just pop it up and if you were replacing the HDX board in the tray that Azrock Rack has, you would actually pull these up so that way you can get in here and pull the HDX platform out and also put it back in. And then once you're done, you just put the little handle back down and it's built into the thing, so cool. Okay, now this is the heart of the system. This system uses the NVIDIA HDX B200 with eight NVIDIA Blackwell GPUs and NVIDIA and VLink switches that allow the GPUs to talk to one another without having to go out over the NICs or the PCIe subsystem. All told, these GPUs give you just over 1.4 terabytes of HBM memory. And what's more, the NVIDIA Blackwell architecture adds things like faster FP4 support and all that kind of stuff that folks in the AI industry really need and really helps increase the performance of the Blackwell generation significantly over the previous Hopper generation that we've looked at many times on the SDH main site. Or I guess another way to say this is that if you're looking for the eight GPU platforms, this is basically the new hotness. So the first thing that you'll see here is that on the front of this, we have a total of five fans across and three rows high. That allows you to have 15 fans that are just pushing air through the eight GPUs. The other side to this is how this connects to the rest of the system, right? Because we have obviously a lot of power that we need, not just for the fans, but also of course for the GPUs. Plus we need our data connectivity to have our PCIe connection between the board, 
or the HGX baseboard and the rest of the system. That is done through these connectors over here. So right here, you'll see that we have our power connectors and what have you, but then down here, you'll see that we have our high speed IO lanes for our connectivity between the GPUs and the rest of our system. These are press fit connectors, which allow us to easily put this into the overall chassis. And if you ever wanted to, you can swap them. Every once in a while, you do have to service GPU trays. And so having these quick disconnects and these high density press fit connectors allow you to do that without having to go and deal with a bunch of cables. And so that makes this a very easy to service system. Okay, so next I wanna talk a little bit about the performance and also the power consumption of the server. Now, first things first, right? In terms of performance, the NVIDIA B200 generation is designed to just straight up beat the old hopper generation because this is a new generation. We have new features in the GPU. We also have better like FP4 performance and other formats. And that is what makes this Blackwell server so impressive. One quick thing to note is that each of the eight GPUs has 180 gigabytes of HBM 3E memory. That means that the total system has 1,440 gigabytes of HBM 3E memory. That is more than a lot of systems have in terms of total system memory. And so when we talk about the Intel Xeon 6 CPUs with the 32 DIMM slots, that's one of the big reasons that folks like that because if you wanna have especially multiples of memory or main system memory to GPU memory, you need to have a lot of DIMMs and that means having something like, you know, 32 DIMM slots is actually quite advantageous. Now I know what you're thinking, hey Patrick, you have 12 three kilowatt power supplies, 36 kilowatts of power supplies in the server, is it using 36 kilowatts? Absolutely not. These types of systems will use somewhere in the, I don't know, like 12 to 14 kilowatt range. So it's not like it is definitely a lot of power, but it's not necessarily like, you know, 32 or 36 kilowatts or anything like that. So it's, it's is a modest jump over the H200 generation. Okay, for all of these videos, I like to have key lessons learned. So what do we learn when doing the system? The first thing that I learned is definitely just how advanced the B200 generation is. I think a lot of times in the industry, we just kind of get a little bit callous to that, but the NVIDIA GPUs, especially in this eight GPU platform, at STH, we literally were doing reviews of the P Pascal generation, so the P100, when NVIDIA didn't even make the baseboard. Now NVIDIA makes the baseboard. We have faster NVLink switches that are the interconnects between all of the GPUs. Each GPU gets a 400 gigabit per second NIC, and you don't want to get a slower NIC or fewer NICs because if you do that, you end up with uh, like GPUs that get stalled waiting for data and waiting for like the tail latencies and all that kind of stuff. So it's just one of those things that you do need to go and get very fast networking. Now, something you will see on the STH site soon is that we have the switches that go along with this. And that's why we have like the optics and stuff in our studio and our lab, because uh, doing this high-end networking is something that we're gonna explore a little bit more. But one of the things that you see in a system like this is not just the GPU portion, but there are 10 NVIDIA Connect X7 NICs in here, right? And so we have a total of four terabits per second of network bandwidth that we can possibly have in a system like this. And that may not seem like a lot, but there are a lot of folks that have things like 32 port, 100 gigabit switches still, especially on like CPU clusters and stuff. That is a pretty darn good and pretty popular switch type still. So that's 3.2 terabits per second. This system alone is four terabits per second of network bandwidth. And we're kind of just not even thinking about the, you know, one gig management ports up front. Something that you really get an appreciation for when you're taking this system apart, Sam and I were working on this just to take photos and B-roll so we can make this video, was just how big these systems are, right? These are giant systems, way more advanced than just a CPU compute server, even a lot of the storage servers, because there's so many different subsystems that are high power, high frequency, and also just like high throughput Put, right, so building a system like this is pretty darn impressive. And I think ASRock Rack has their own flavor of putting together a B200 system that is really neat, right? Like, let's take an example of that. Those front little IO and having the ability to go and put those little, uh, you know, network ports and like plug them in with the ethernet cables and having those run to the back and just that way of having either a front IO or rear IO skew without having to have two different skews. I just think it's super awesome, right? And guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, well, why don't you share it with your friends and colleagues? But also if you like this video, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever you come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.